Hello, my name is Reed Kotke, and I will be talking about the Fourier transform. Uh, more specifically, I'll be talking about the usefulness of the Fourier transform in different applications. To begin some preliminary information, the, the Fourier transform is a transformation of a function of f of t from a function of time to a function of frequency. Uh, the usefulness of the Fourier transform is that it allows us to transform partial differential equations into ordinary differential equations. That's where you see this PDEs into ODEs. Now, this is helpful in terms of uh, real applications in electricity, sound, uh, spectroscopy, and light. Anything that has uh, waveforms or general functions that are difficult to um, to evaluate, we can use the Fourier transform to come up with a more simple solution. And the Fourier transform is derived from the Fourier series, something I'll be showing you right here. So now, in case you aren't too familiar with the Fourier series, the Fourier series is a function can be modeled as the summation of sine and cosine waves with different coefficients. But here we have a, this, this dot, dot, dot. Uh, it represents in semi-infinite some, some amount of sine and cosine waves, which when, when summed together, can result in uh, in one function and see these blue lines represent that one function that result from those sine and cosines being added together and it can be modeled using this definition of the Fourier series one half uh, a naught plus the summation of the cosine waves with the function a n plus b of n times the sine waves so here again we have the, the Fourier series now the Fourier series is based upon the period negative L to L. It's really the function over and over infinitely many times. But we want to expand that, uh, those bounds from negative L to L, which are set periods, to negative infinity to infinity. We want to stretch the period so that the only bounds are negative infinity and infinity, so that we can model a function of sines and cosines uh, on an infinite domain, rather than just from negative L to L. So we're going to begin with the Fourier series. Here we have the definition. First thing we're going to do is make this into the complex Fourier series. In order to do that, we use Euler's complex identities here, where cosine is defined here and sine is defined here, the only difference being the negative operator here. Now we plug in our cosine, the green terms here, so that uh, by distributing our a of n's to each of these exponential terms and our b of n's, with the negative i to each of these terms and then pulling out our exponentials basically simplifying this this uh, complex formula in in some way or of another and then we're going to separate these two well they're not integrals at this point they are summations uh, we're going to separate these two summations and we're going to index our first integral from negative one to negative infinity now this is interesting it's going to be helpful later on but the point is is you know, here we're, we're summing, for, we're indexing from n equals 1 to infinity, and there's no reason we can't index from negative 1 to negative infinity, so we're going to plug in our negative n and our negative n here, and we're going to separate these. It's still the same thing, we're just indexing differently here. Soon you'll see why that's helpful, so this is the repeated function. We apply this definition that uh, a of n correlates to the cosine term, and since cosine is an even function, the a of negative n term is going to be equal to the same as if it was a positive n. It's going to be a of n. Uh, on the other hand, the b of n correlates to the sine term, which is an odd function. So the b of negative n's are going to be the opposite of b of n. So this is, again, as I said, helpful in that when we, when we look at this, where we're summing from negative 1 to negative infinity, all of our a of n's are going to remain a of n's, but our b of negative n's are going to turn into negative b of n's, turning this negative into a, into a plus operator. And then we're going to be able to sum here from negative infinity to infinity, and we have a plus here, and all of these terms are equal to all of these terms. Now this, this allows us to have one summation, again, from negative infinity to infinity, where we have some coefficient c of n. Well, c of n represents our coefficient. Rather than previously where we had an a of n and a b of n coefficient for the sine and the cosine, we just have one c of n. Um, so now in order to find c of n, we, we must go further into the definitions of c of n. So previously, as I said, we had a of n and b of n in the Fourier series. And there are definitions for the a of n coefficient and the b of n coefficient, which depend upon the, the function that we're modeling f of t. So if we take these, these formulas and we plug them into our definition of c of n, 
So we have the green here is the A of N and the, the red here is the B of N. We plug these in and we combine the things that they have in common in both cases, one over L, the integral of negative L to L, and then uh, that function f of t, and then we still have this, this plus operator, uh, cosine plus i sine, two separate linear integrals there. And then again, we have to recognize uh, Euler's identity in that the cosine of this term plus i sine of this term can be can be written as e to the i n pi over l times t. We have this integral can be rewritten as 1 over 2 l, uh, integral from negative l to l in the f of t, and then we simply have this complex form of sine and cosine right there. So now we've the function f of t can be evaluated now as a summation from negative infinity to infinity of some coefficient c of n times this um, complex form of the sine and cosine. So this is this is the Fourier series rewritten, where our coefficient is equal to uh, one, or integral from negative L to L, uh, the f of t times this exponential. Now we want this to be in terms of frequency, as we said before, rather than it, in terms of time. So frequency is, is the amount of time it takes to complete one period. It's, it's one cycle of the function. So in our case, we're going to have n pi over l. So if we replace this n pi over l with the, the period or the frequency uh, omega, here we have this omega plugged in. Um, now this is a function of omega rather than a function of t. So we want to make the bounds. Uh, the next thing we want to do in order to use the Fourier transform uh, to its full extent, we have to make the bounds negative infinity to infinity, or our delta omega at that point previously was uh, you know, pi over L. So each, each omega, each period, the amount of time it took our function to get from one, uh, the end of one period to the end of the next period was delta omega. It was pi over L. but but as we we have this l here, which we want to stretch to infinity, so this omega is going to get going to get really really small. Omegas are going to get really really close, to, and then omega represents all points. The frequency is is the the domain is stretched, and the omegas are pushed together. Um, so our delta omega goes to zero, and our bound goes to infinity. And we also have this. Um, this is important to note is that since the delta omega is equal to pi over L, then we can rewrite L as pi over delta omega. Now, technically, our L is stretched to infinity, but for the sake of plugging it in here, rather than 1 over L, we have this, what we found, pi over delta omega, which goes in here. And now, again, we were previously looking at the integral from negative L to L. This is simply the formula we had on the other page, but we want it to be an infinite domain. We now have L going from negative infinity to infinity of the function that we had on the previous page. We have the summation of this infinite domain of its continuous functions f of t times e i omega t. And we can already see here that we're still summing the outside terms, but we have this, this delta omega here. And since this term is with respect to omega, we can turn this into an integral because, again, omega got really, really close together. So now we are integrating from negative infinity to infinity, and we are doing so with respect to omega, which is nice because this delta omega came from our definition of L. And now we have the Fourier series uh, has turned into the Fourier transform in that the Fourier transform is the complex coefficients of the Fourier series. They are uh, based upon the, the variable omega. So this is the definition of the Fourier transform. Uh, some function of omega is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral from negative infinity to infinity times the or of the function times e to the i omega t. And if we do the inverse Fourier transform, which is right here, we would, uh, we would plug in negative infinity to infinity times the Fourier transformed f of t to e to that. That should be negative i omega t. I apologize. There should be a negative sign here. And that's how we would result in the original function f of t. So now, uh, applying the Fourier transform is based upon using each of these operations, where you take f of t, apply the Fourier transform, and you get some Fourier operator. So here we're going to be transforming a PDE into an ODE. 
and we're going to be using some of those uh, Fourier transforms that were previously shown. So here we have the, the heat equation, if you are familiar, uh, which is so some heat equation which is represented by u of x and t, and we say that this is equal to um, partial of u with respect to t is equal to beta times partial of u with respect to x two times. And uh, therefore, the Fourier transform, we're going to let equal to this, this capital U function, which is of omega and t. So to figure out how we would take the Fourier transform of this, we're going to take the Fourier transform of both sides of this. The first thing we're going to have to do is reply, we're going to rely upon the formally proven Fourier transform. So first, the, the, the Fourier transform of the partial with respect to t is equal to the partial of the Fourier transform with respect to t. So that's how we have this Fourier, Fourier transform operator of u sub t is equal to the partial of the Fourier transformed u. And then we have the Fourier transform of u partial x twice. Fourier transform of the partial of some function taken n times is equal to negative i omega to the n times the Fourier transform of that function. So that's how we write this as negative i omega squared times the Fourier transform of the original u. And now we're going to continue, we're going to move this down here and then I'm going to, how I did this in red and then we're going to move it over here to the other side, this, this partial of t or differentiating with respect to t. And then we're going to divide this, this u of uh, the big capital U, so the Fourier transform of the U, the heat equation, over to the other side. And uh, this is from the previous slide, but now we're going to integrate um, both sides. Now, in this, on the left side here, we have the integral of 1 over the Fourier transformed function times, um, well, with respect to the Fourier transform U. And then on the right side, we have negative B omega squared T, which isn't going to be too complicated, but what this gives us is the natural log of the Fourier transform to u, which is equal to, we see a t has been added from the integral in this case, and we have to add, we have to keep in mind that there could, there could be some function of omega which would go away because it was only with respect to t. So when we integrate, we have some constant which is with respect to omega, which we have to keep in mind here. We have to, we have to consider that case. Now this L of n is going to, um, we're going to take the e of this side and then e of this side, the exponential. So cancel out this L of n. It's going to give you the, the Fourier transform of our heat equation is uh, equal to, technically, the, the coefficient of omega in an exponential, but it's still a coefficient. So we're going to represent it as c uh, times e to the negative beta omega squared t. Now this is equal to the Fourier transformed original solution. And then if we take the inverse Fourier transform of this function right here, we're going to have our original uh, u of xt. So this term, this capital U, which is the Fourier transform uh, of the actual solution, this is now a ordinary differential equation. This constant, which is with respect to omega times e to the negative beta omega squared t. So this is our ordinary differential equation. And the inverse Fourier transform, which is the actual solution, is going to be also an ordinary differential equation. So that is how the Fourier transform is useful, because we began with a partial differential equation, and now our term is a ordinary differential equation.